be the geriatric raconteur. <laughs> We, uh, we really need to continue with tribute. We have some really accomplished sailors with us tonight. People, many of us here have competed in the Everglades Challenge, but we, we, we've got the winners for Pete's sake. Randy Smythe, first to finish, fourth record. Mike McGarry and, and his crew, uh, uh, Ron White, uh, first to finish uh, in their class, and really not all that far behind Randy, although Mike says too far. <laughs> and uh, I think maybe one of the most remarkable achievements in my experience it's, uh, it's that of our, our, our great friend, Mead Gushan, who at age 75, <laughs> beat out, what, 25 younger competitors in his class. <laughs> and uh, uh, I'm told that, uh, that Mead has become rather passionate about small boats these days. So I'm going to entitle this little presentation, Big Boats Are Crazy and Small Boats Are Just Nuts. <laughs> or, or is it just four nuts? <laughs> Me, I hope you'll say a little something to us about your race. Huh? How in the world did you do that? <laughs> Sure. Oh, yeah. Finish up. You're doing too well. <laughs> well, oh, okay. Um, the uh, the business about small boats, which to me says so much about the future of yachting, just because the pressures on humanity and on the planet are such that trailering seems to make a whole lot of sense these days. Let's face it, if the thing is too big to trailer on one axle, it's too big. <laughs> and uh, the, uh, the experience that I've had personally with small boats goes way back but it was interrupted by a long period of big boats. Uh, as a matter of fact, I learned to sail in a, in a 151 foot steel staysail scooter. <laughs> the first time I got into a sailing dinghy, all I could do was holler for help. <laughs> totally. One way, but uh, uh, along the line someplace, uh, I, I I bumped into a, a guy named Arthur Piver, who is uh, credited as being the, uh, the father of the modern trimaran. It was in the mid-1950s, actually, uh, modern catamarans came 10 years before, 1947, was Woody Brown and the first real modern seafaring multi <laughs> is beautiful Manukai, which uh, we can still learn from today. Um, a marvelous achievement, and along came uh, after Woody was uh, Rudy Choi, who really started winning the Trans-Pacific races with his boats. And uh, then we can't forget the, uh, 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 I'm a sort of a multi-hull historian. I've been gathering, trying to get all of this stuff together because, uh, in, in a sense, I'm the last of the old timers is left standing. You know? so <laughs> we're trying to uh, get all of the, all the multi-hall history in one place. And uh, one of us who is still very much going is James Warham in England. And, uh, and he came along with uh, the boats that were sufficiently simple for backyarders to build that he's still got more owner-built ocean cruising multi-hulls out there doing it 
than all of the rest of us designers combined. They are not high performance boats. We can learn from that. We should try not to become so sophisticated with our boats that they're driven into obscurity by cost and complication. That's been my conclusion after watching this phenomenon for 50 years, more than that, actually when we started messing around with the first little multi-hulls. And excuse me to those of you who are not into multi-hulls yet. Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> come in and tie up and there goes the whole harbor. <laughs> but uh, uh, it's, it's just uh, the way it happened to me, as a matter of fact, if I had stayed with monohulls, I might have been able to make a decent living, but I got strung out on trimarans in the mid-1950s, and that's where my story starts here on the screen tonight in Sausalito, California in about uh, uh, 1957. And uh, all I wanted to do at that time was work in a boat factory, ride a motorcycle, and play around with my little 16-foot pirate trimaran called the Frolic. It qualifies as a small boat, and we can have the house lights down. We'll get, uh, the, get Jim, the show going. The, the, the slides are changing uh, all the time. Just okay, the there's something wrong here. We've got to get back to the beginning. Whoever's driving this thing, I don't know how to drive it. <laughs> We've got to start at the beginning. It's always technical. It's always. I prepared a special program for us tonight. I worked on it for days. <laughs> and I'm not able to get it to burn the disc. Okay.